Hello everyone and welcome back to De-Influenced. I'm Sasha and my goal is to get you guys to think critically about where you're currently spending your social media currency. And I do that by revealing the truth behind the highlight reels of today's popular influencers. Today we have another dip the toes dive, I guess you could say, and we are opening the can of worms that is Matt and Abby Howard. Have you heard of these guys? They are a very, very popular YouTube couple, but on the tail of digging into Kay and Tay, the other perfect TikTok couple, I figured it was a good time to dive into Mr. and Mrs. Perfect too, because remember, not everything is what it seems in front of the camera. So let's get into today's video. All right, guys, so Matt and Abby Howard, they are a young couple. They are popular on YouTube and on TikTok. We will go take a look as we always do shortly. And they kind of blew up for being a family channel and because they were such a young couple. I believe they got together at 13, 14 years old. They were married by 19 and then had kids by the time they were 20, 20, 21-ish. So what we're going to do today, we'll go look at their socials, we will go look at their most popular TikToks and we'll take a look at their most popular YouTube videos and then we'll go from there and we'll dig into why Matt might not be the perfect husband that he portrays himself to be on social media and how he so badly wants to be that picture perfect husband, that guy that gets gold stars, the guy that other guys want to be, look up to. But he is consistently putting his foot in his mouth. Why? Because he's not a good guy. It's all an act. First things first, let's go take a peek at their socials. I have YouTube and TikTok pulled up here. That is the two most popular socials that they have. Uh, apparently I don't have it anymore. What happened? I hate that. Watch another video. No, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Stop it. All right, so on YouTube, their original account, Matt and Abby has 6.98 million subscribers. New videos every Sunday, don't go watch. And they have 6.6 .6 billion, billion views. So that's a lot of views. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of views. And if we go here to videos, our birth story, telling my family I'm pregnant, finding out I'm pregnant and telling my whatever. Abby got hurt cliff jumping. So accidents and hospitals and tragedies, anyways, gender reveal and all that. And then if we jump over to the unplanned podcast, I, no, 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 stop. Stop. I'm just like waiting till marriage. Or were you nervous for the wedding night? I was you were not so nervous. Ah, I hate those automatic played videos. The little ads like, check out our shit. No, I don't want to check out your stuff. So we have the Unplanned Podcast, which they recently started. They have uh, 678,000 subscribers. And... Oh, well, recently. They started in 2020. And they have 377 million views. So they are making bank on YouTube alone. And then over on TikTok, they have 5.3 million subscribers and 459 million likes. As I told you when we opened up the video, they try to portray this perfect, happy, amazing couple. And the problem with that is that it's, it's not real life. And when people started to realize... Ooh, you know what? That didn't, that didn't sound right. Or what did Matt just say? Because that's like, you know, a meme or it should be a meme. What did Matt just say? Like, did he really just say that? They started putting two and two together and realizing maybe this actually isn't the most happy, perfect couple. There are some red flags. So what I want to do first is I actually downloaded their top three TikTok videos so we don't give them to view. No social media currency from me. And what I want to do is go and get those. And there's also a TikTok that they deleted. So he started receiving some heat about a year ago after their son was born because uh, he's a shitty dad. <laughs> Sorry. Because he doesn't do anything with the kids. Is that better? I'm not 100% I'm not sure if that's any better. But 
he posted a TikTok where he was saying that, you know, his family, they take on traditional gender roles and Abby wanted to go to the gym. So he offered to take care of the baby and clean up the house. And although I understand that it's normal for most couples, if the wife is at home with the children, that she takes on a little bit more of the housework. However, they don't have jobs. They both work in the home so for them it should be this opportunity to allow for 50 50 split of the tasks it just it doesn't make sense and it's really gross and and yucky right because traditional gender roles so what matt like what about you you're not going off to work and 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 making an income super yucky so I found a Reddit post here and I also have a little TikTok explaining it. Let's go look at their most popular videos first. Just so you guys have an idea for those that don't know kind of what the vibes are. We'll go take a look at the videos I downloaded. So they originally went viral for this video, I believe, or one of these videos. This is the one of the videos that made people go, wow, Matt's such a good husband. Look how patient he's being. Look how awesome he's being. Okay. I think I'm being teased. You're not being teased. Okay, you're something that's in there. Matt, the white pillow, please. Yes, right here. You're mad at me. I'm not mad at you. Okay, what he's doing right there. You need to be right here. I'm trying to hold the white pillow, though. Just... It's not going to go anywhere, Matt. Can you pull this down? Don't touch anything. Okay. I'm talking to me first. Okay. What else do you Yeah, do that. Please don't be upset with me. I'm not, I'm not being so nice, huh? I don't want to be this way. I that's want to be nice. I'm not here to that, though. I didn't want that. What do you want? The picture, picture. Can we play for you? Yes, please. Yeah, here you go. Can you move this closer to you? Please, more. Whoa. That was a, that was a wild ride. Wow. Okay. So essentially, this is what people recognized him for. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's so helpful. He's so kind. He's, he's helping his wife. She's coming out of anesthesia here. That's why she's losing her mar marbles a little bit. But remember. He set up the camera before this whole interaction. He set it up, he turned it on, he pressed record, and then went to help his wife, who is coming out of anesthesia, I assume? I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to assume. I don't know why she's coming out of anesthesia. But before the priority of, hey, let's get our wife in on the couch and set up with her pillows and comfy, he turned on the camera and pressed record. So are the motives to be a good husband and help his wife or are the motives show the camera that I'm a good husband and make lots of money? Okay, so here's the other one. We're in the car, ready to go to ah. the hospital, excited? Ah, okay, are they go? I think, surprising my wife with the song I wrote for our son. Okay. I feel like he deserves to hear this since for our son that you're gonna give birth to in like two hours, so. So she deserves to hear it. Oh my God, he's singing. As soon as the song started playing, you started squirming You're in kidding. there. Yeah. I wanted you to hear it because then you can listen to it at the hospital too. It like made me feel so many emotions, but then it also just filled me with like peace. I'm just so thankful mm -hmm. that you're the dad to our Thanks. baby. We're all so lucky to have you. I know you feel unprepared, but you are ready for this. I feel like I'm already falling in love with this kid and I know I'm going to fall in love with him even more when we meet him here in a couple hours. He just like says the things that he thinks people want to hear and he thinks what a I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. He just puts his foot in his mouth all the time. Since having kids, so I remember the song says, I'm just after all that we He's like, that'd be like that. Breakfast, the ladies in our pack. Miss you whenever I'm on a ride. Together is where my heart feels. Yeah. <laughs> if I could change a single thing, I wouldn't. 
I definitely heard the F word right there, not if I could. Um, okay, so that's enough of that because, uh, no, I don't want to listen to him sing anymore. But yeah, that also, uh, he's trying to become a famous singer and he leaves all the time to like go to Nashville, I think, and record and then, you know, comes home but then complains about it and basically does not want to be a dad but tries to show that he's the perfect dad. I don't know, I get the vibes that he also doesn't want to be married. Like he doesn't want, he wants to be a like single thirst trap guy. I don't know, I don't know. It's, I don't know, I don't like him. He gives me icky vibes. So this is a TikTok from spillsesh underscore YT. She's also on YouTube. You might have come across her before if you're into commentary type videos that uh, talk about influencers like this, which if you're here, you probably are. This is the video where Matt is basically saying that our house takes on traditional gender roles and uh, let's listen to what he has to say. TikTokers Matt and Abby are getting some backlash for a recent video Matt posted where he said they have a traditional household where she cleans and takes care of the baby most of the time and he wanted to surprise her by cleaning for once and everyone is roasting him in the comments. Don't be fooled by me picking up my house because I'm not typically the one that does it. And don't be fooled by me taking care of my son because most of the time my wife does that too. Abby really wanted to go to the gym tonight so I'm on Griffin duty and I wanted to surprise her with a clean house when she got home. In our relationship we naturally take on more traditional marital roles and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay again like I was saying earlier I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with having traditional marital roles. I have stayed home with my kids and my husband has worked outside the home so naturally I do take care of the house more than he does and I have more household tasks because I'm home, right? But that doesn't mean that he just gets to, you know, not contribute to the household because he works outside the home. That's not how a household is supposed to run. Every member of the household should be contributing to the household. It shouldn't just be on mom. That's how moms get burnt out really quickly when all the stuff gets piled on them constantly and it's exhausting. So that is a little quick intro to Matt and Abby and what they try to pretend to be, at least Matt. Abby, I find, is a little more conservative in the way she thinks and talks. She definitely isn't as into the whole social media thing as Matt is. I really feel DCP has covered them. So I've been consuming kind of like expository Matt and Abby stuff. Like I, I know a little bit about them, but I find that Abby has a very rational head on her shoulders for the most part. She does play her part in this. She said yes to exploiting their children online for a, a long time. However, they've since taken their kids offline, which is amazing. Good job for kind of waking up and realizing like, hey, this might not be safe. And yet on the most recent podcast, they're talking about needing to move and everything and needing to think about their kids' safety and school boards and stuff like that. Yet I believe they like doxed themselves or something. They revealed personal information shortly after that or, or something along the line. So it's like Matt seems like the one who's really pushing the social media. And again, it's interesting if we go and look at their TikTok, I feel like he's on more than uh, Tay from K and Tay are, but I don't know. Okay, together, 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 Abby, Matt, Abby, Abby, Matt in a towel. Oh, Abby with Matt in a towel. Abby, 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 Matt's in the background. So like, do you see, it's mostly Abby. So it's kind of giving the same sort of vibes as Kay and Tay, like, she's obviously the money maker and people come to watch her. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it gives me really weird, really gross controlling vibes. So if we jump over to Reddit, like I was saying, I saw this getting canceled part two traditional roles from contribution warm 9175. 
the thank you. So this was posted a year ago. The second half of the podcast was a little more boring in my opinion, and I don't think either of them fully grasp why people are annoyed with Matt. It's for a lot more than one bad video. Yeah. Matt was annoyed at comments that asked why Abby doesn't take care of the baby slash do stuff around the house, which is what inspired him to make that video about how he usually doesn't do much in terms of childcare slash household stuff. Really? Okay. He acknowledges that his opening line for the video was pretty bad. Don't be fooled by me taking care of my son because my wife usually does that. I mean, he's only admitting that it was pretty bad because people called him out on it. You saw the video. He wanted those pats on the back, those gold stars. Those, you're such a good husband. You let your uh, wife go to the gym. You know what I mean? Him opening up with like, no, I don't do anything around the house because traditional gender roles and I just like go to work and then I come home and sit on the couch and I uh, demand a beer from my wife while she puts my slippers on my feet and uh, I watch sports and yell at the TV all night. Like it just, I don't know. I don't know. He really wanted a gold star for that video. When they are taking care of G alone, it's called G duty, except for the time that Abby went to California for a day and Matt called himself a single dad, I guess. I remember that. They left stitches and comments on for the video, which is apparently what allowed the hate to get out of hand. Well, I think turning your comments off is a scaredy cat thing to do. So... Okay, because it's censorship in a sense. You're not allowing people to say the other point. You're not allowing people to defend themselves. You're not allowing people to open up or share their view or anything if you turn comments off and you're not letting people engage and oh well, watch your platform crash and burn. Abby felt very protective of Matt and that is why she made sassy TikToks defending him. She seemed to kind of lean into the idea that it was a bunch of angry feminists who were mad at their own husbands and taking it out on Matt. Also, that maybe single mothers with airing their own problems, question mark. So again, that's the dangers of fake couples on social media like this. Maybe we'll make a whole playlist about a-hole couples on the internet and being fake for the camera because they all are. All of the popular people on YouTube, on TikTok, all of these perfect couples that you see, I can guarantee 97% of the time it's BS because nobody can share their entire life online and have a healthy, happy relationship. Not when you give away everything not when you give away your entire privacy when you let humans on the internet into your marriage how like how do you think that's a good idea how do you think that's gonna go and that's what vloggers do and that's the dangers of social media because you get comparisons like this angry feminists who are mad that their husbands don't do the same thing who are mad that the, he doesn't do it either guys he said it in the video. He also doesn't do the thing. This is the one time he's doing the thing. And why did he do it? He did it for the camera. To make himself seem like such a good guy. Like, look, I'm taking some slack off my wife because I never do anything. Like, no. No, going above and beyond is one thing. Doing something that you never do because you're a piece of shit is not gold star worthy. Sorry. For, for clicks and views on top of that. Doing it for clicks and views. Like, no. They had friends of friends joining in by commenting on these hate videos with criticism. I'm curious as to who this was because I never saw that. Not friends. Friends of friends joining in. Hmm. Interesting. Someone said that Abby looked up. Someone said that Abby looked up. Oh, Abby looked it up to make a video about it. They said she saw an opportunity for views and is just using them. I mean, maybe. Is that a common thing. Maybe we could find more TikToks about dads being uh, not involved. <laughs> they seem genuinely shocked that not everyone in their lives loves them and worships the ground they walk on. I mean, who else sounds like that? God forbid anyone have a differing opinion. In her initial video response to this, Abby doubled down on how they have traditional roles within their marriage. But in the podcast, she kind of backed away from that and called their roles fluid. Okay. Abby says that we live in a man-hating culture. She hopes that her white male wealthy child does not grow up at a disadvantage due to this cultural mindset. 
LOL. The new TikTok search bar feature recommends searches, is problematic for them, and allowed people to find hate videos of them. They close this out by stating they loved having a podcast because people can really get to know their hearts and won't have such a flawed view of them. I am not personally having that experience with it. No, guys, it's making it worse. It's, it's making it worse. It really bothered me when Matt was like, I was a single dad for 36 hours because I feel like he was using that for clicks. I've had a single mom my entire life and what they have is not single parenting. It's taking care of your child while your spouse is away. Yeah, legit though. Like they, he has no idea. Man hating culture did Abby elaborate here? Your last comment of the podcast is not improving my thoughts on them made me laugh. Me too. They were talking about how much hate Matt was getting for explicitly saying that he doesn't normally clean the house or take care of the baby and then Abby generalized that into man-hating culture. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as someone says a bunch of angry feminists, I know whatever is coming out of their mouth is not worth hearing. Yeah, legit. LOL, they made it sound like people were twisting Matt's words, but he literally made multiple videos saying he does little housework and people criticized him for it. There was no twisting. Man-hating culture? No, we hate Matt and his punchable face. <laughs> it is neither man-hating nor angry feminists mad at their husbands to point out obvious crap behavior. I'm very happily married and think Matt sucks. So there goes that theory. They are very young and naive and Abby in particular seems extremely sheltered to the outside world and how things operate. She also has zero frame of reference for how a partner should slash could behave. So of course she thinks Matt is perfect. I look forward to the day she's 35 and realizes she didn't know a GD thing. Yeah, and I feel like that's the sad part and if it's true if Matt is a narcissist right which I mean like that word is thrown around so much lately but we see it we see a lot of narcissistic tendencies in social media couples and especially lifestyle vloggers lifestyle influencers because they give away all of their privacy and they think that they're important enough that people care that they're going to Starbucks again today or going to Target again today and they they provide all this this gross nonsense but for me the scary part is is just like Abby seems really sheltered like this person said and kind of out of control and people I saw a couple times like Matt's controlling Matt's controlling he oh the control is amping up oh this oh that and it makes me, it makes me wonder because I'm pretty sure they are religious. They did say somewhere about waiting for marriage and like, was that hard and yada yada. Maybe it was in that dumb clip that we were forced to listen to for five seconds. So if you think about that on top of traditional gender roles and you think about being religious and raised religious, the woman in religion, especially in very, um oh my gosh, fundamentalist religion, they are often told to obey their husband and that their husband rules the house. So if that's the case here, and I don't know, I don't know what their religious background is or anything, but the waiting until marriage and kind of like that purity culture. And I find that when you add religion, it's very easy for someone to get abused because then you have God that you're looking to and you don't want to disrespect your God and if you get divorced from your husband that's disrespectful to your God right so it's so oh it's messy eh she's so delusional and so inexperienced in life she thinks she's living the life marrying her high school crush but homeboy still acts like he is in high school and is a useless little boy that cosplays as a loving husband and dad of the century. Exactly, exactly. And that's the that's the thing too with people who have been together for a long time. They don't have any other frame of reference. And if you end up committing and getting married and being with someone who, I don't know, is narcissistic or is manipulative or is good at making you think that like it's you and you're the crazy one, then it's really easy to kind of just like fall into it and then when social media hit right and they got pregnant what's she gonna do right now they have 
more than enough money to sustain them for the rest of their lives as long as they were smart with it. I mean, as we know, most popular influencers, lifestyle vloggers uh, are not smart with their money. But I don't know. It's just, it's gross. My eyes rolled into the top of my head when Matt talked about how all the online negativity took a toll on him. So he had to go on a snowboarding trip with the Beastins to refresh. Such a rough life. Yeah, legit. <laughs> yes, see, Abby should be mad at Matt and herself. They basically admitted that this is not an equal partnership and decided just to label it as tradition. Oh, traditional. I'm sorry, but back when traditional roles were a thing, the husband actually worked and provided. That's what I said, exactly. Matt doesn't provide anything. Editing videos for your YouTube channel is not working. It is working, but he's still home. And editing a video, the best part about, you know, working from home and like being your own boss is you can pause it and like put it down and, and walk away. And even at that, let's say they film for two hours and then he edits for four hours. Well, typically they're together when they film, so cool. And then the editing afterwards and posting and all that stuff, sure, it can take some time, but uh, you can pause your work and go help out. You can pause your work and be present. That's what I do. That's what I have to do because I, I don't have a choice, if that makes sense. Like, I work when I can. That's it. I feel like as people get more popular and more followers and stuff, I mean, followers get a little bit more demanding and they have expectations and stuff like that. And I understand all of that. But also, your family has expectations of you. So where are your priorities? Is it your followers or your family? There's been times where I've had to say, guys, I have to tap out for the weekend because this is crazy. And why is there anything wrong with that, right? So this person said it. He doesn't provide anything. They have a fairly hefty income, but like it's not like he's leaving and going and working for 8 to 12 hours. And if that's what he's doing at home, he doesn't have to do that. He can take breaks. He can work in chunks. They can make a schedule so that it's more balanced for everything or have you're doing this so I take care of this time to this time and then you're on dad duty and I can do whatever I want to do. I can go to the gym or I can whatever and switch off. But then it was this, oh my god. <sighs> okay, let's see if there's another getting canceled. Cultural appropriation. Oh, cool. That was a year ago, too. Here's a summary of the first half of the podcast for those who don't care to listen. I'd kind of forgotten about this, and listening to Abby cry about it for 30 minutes made me roll my eyes. Okay. Thank you, Contribution Warm, because uh, I appreciate you doing these recaps for me. Because I don't care to listen. I, I, I don't want to listen to um, Abby's voice. Sorry, Abby. Nothing against you, girl. But especially if you're crying for 30 minutes. No, thank you, please. Abby kept reiterating over and over that getting canceled over their merch in Hawaii felt like a traumatic event for her. Okay. Prior to moving there, they were apparently both aware of the history of Hawaii. Oh, yeah. I remember this. DCP covered this, didn't he? Like a year ago when it happened. Yo, they assumed that saying aloha dudes at the beginning of their videos was fine because there was a big sign in the airport that said aloha. I mean, even on the mainland, places like Hobby Lobby sell decor that say aloha. Oh my god. They used their own money to make merch that says aloha dudes. Initially got positive feedback from followers. Started getting attention on Instagram a few days later and were shocked and heartbroken that many people were accusing them of trying to monetize the Hawaiian language. People didn't even consider their strong morals and pure intentions. I like how sassy this is. Uh, what was your name? Contribution. I like it. Thanks for your contribution to the sass. To the sassitude. Some disagreements between the two of them as to whether or not they received death threats online. Abby said they did. Matt said they didn't. They did receive DMs telling them to go back where they came from, calling them derogatory names and saying that they knew where they lived. That's scary. Guys, don't ever come to my house without telling me. 
I hate it. It's like the worst thing. It gives me so much anxiety when people show up unannounced, um, especially strangers on the internet. Don't do that. I'm, I'm making it clear now, uh, especially strangers on the internet. No, I hate when anyone shows up to my house unannounced, guys. But uh, yeah, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't tell me you know where I live either because I'm fine living in blissful ignorance over here in my like little igloo, my decked out igloo. Look at that. I got, I got my, I got my bear up there in my igloo corner. Uh, yeah. So go back to where they came from. Yeah, that's not a death threat. They didn't want to go out in public out of fear that everyone knew and was judging them. I mean, they probably were. They probably were. Abby doesn't want G to ever have his own social media, but I guess it's cool to exploit him for now for financial gain. I mean, naturally, right? They felt unwelcome on the island and much safer when they went to visit the mainland. They definitely didn't think through how this sounded. Yeah, no. They need to hire a, a PR manager, like, n now. My, my husband's really good at PR, Matt and Abby. If, uh, Matt, you want some tips, uh, you might need a PR coach, just saying. They donated the proceeds of the... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's take a sip. Let's take a sip. Hold, please. They donated the proceeds of their merch to the Hawaiian language charity. Okay. Abby believes they are great people and better than all these haters. I'm obviously paraphrasing here, lol, because they will never use their platform to bring down others. I guess I'm just a hater, guys. Abby, I don't hate you. I don't. I, I'm, I don't. I'm kind of worried about you and your mental health. Like, you, you okay, girl? Like, just, I don't know. Maybe we need a secret signal next unplanned podcast. Just like fall asleep if you're not okay. <laughs> that was funny during the K and Tay podcast. I'll link it here. Um, she definitely was asleep with her eyes open. 100%. They ended up leaving Hawaii after a year because they felt unwelcome there. What stood out to me is just how much this affected Abby and how she called the whole thing shameful and isolating. To me, that says she fully recognizes why they received backlash and knows they were in the wrong. I just have one question. If you felt so unsafe in Hawaii, why on earth did you return and bring G, your defenseless child, and stay for over a month for vacation if it's that unsafe and traumatic? PSA, I didn't watch the podcast, so if they address this, ignore my nonsense here. Right. I'm sure they feel safe now. It's been so much time since the incident. While I don't doubt they got some scary hate messages at the height of things, I got the impression that they felt more ashamed than scared overall. Abby described it as walking around with a scarlet letter. I think it didn't impact Matt as much because he seems less sensitive to other people's opinions than Abby. Yeah, I mean... I don't know, but then he, like, claps back if anyone, like, gives him hate or, like, with that video and stuff like that. So he's obviously bothered by the comments. Yeah, maybe just not as emotional. Maybe that's a good way to put it. I don't... I don't know. Their entire job and lives being social media aside, it's insane to think that your child will never, ever have their own social media. I mean, yeah. Excellent summary. She really laid on the poor me about their time in the Hawaii in the Hawaii, about their time in Hawaii. So much of what got them in trouble seemed to be the result of their own cluelessness. I look forward to part two about Matt's cancellation. I can't believe they said they felt unwelcome and felt safer when they visited the mainland. It's one thing to say you feel unwelcome and it's another to basically say you felt unsafe. WTF. Do people forget that Hawaii is part of the United States? They basically are just saying they felt unsafe in a non-white area. Yep, I audibly gasped when she said that. Like, girl, whoa, way to expose yourself in the worst way. What would you do if you were getting death threats online? Do you think you'd feel safe? I sure wouldn't. I would have said the exact same thing. Getting out of Hawaii would make me feel a ton safer. Maybe you should rethink your statement on how you can't believe they said that. Uh, no. They didn't say that jesus christ anyway are you telling me are you trying to tell me that all of the unkind messages were all from hawaiians local to hawaii right here right now no 
other people were upset about it too. So it's not a matter of feeling unsafe in Hawaii, although like you should feel unwelcome, but disagree. I've literally lived in Hawaii before and never got death threats, probably because I didn't move at the peak of COVID and I didn't broadcast it online as something I did just for fun while everyone else was struggling and just continuing. <sighs> I didn't know that just to continue living life normally. They need to grow up and learn how to read their audience, LMAO. Picking everything up to move to an island and then complaining about things like Amazon, shopping, etc. came off as them being naive and privileged. Yeah, I wouldn't even say naive. I would say just privileged assholes. Also, death threats online will, father, will follow you no matter where you go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're, you're telling me that like, it's not like it was their next door neighbor sending them death threats saying, I know where you live, I'm coming. Like, no, it was probably people not in Hawaii and they were safer in Hawaii. Although, yeah, walking around with the scarlet letter. But again, that's assuming that Hawaiians would do something, that they would just like be this vicious group of people who would attack you for some. No, they're gonna shame you and they're gonna shun you, but they're not... Ugh. Deep breath. The islanders have always been protective of their island and their way of life. When other people come in and then complain that it's not like where they came from, it's insulting to their culture. Yeah. Matt and Abby should have seen the death threats and just taken proper protocol for it, either getting someone to take care of it or you take yourself offline. You make yourself open to that kind of stuff when you put your life online like that. I don't think the shirts were offensive because a ton of other places make them. My bigger issue with them and Hawaii was that they complained the entire time they lived there because it wasn't like the mainland. IDK why they expected it to be though. It was like they did zero research and complained about where they chose to be. Yeah, that is like, guys, oh my god. The thing that gets me about all of this drama they're now sharing about what happened in Hawaii is they never, to my recollection, ever talked about this before as the reason why they left. In the summer of 2021, they had been visiting family in the mainland and made a vlog about how they couldn't wait to get back to Hawaii. Then, December of 2021, their video was saying they were leaving Hawaii. Made it seem like a death in Abby's family made them realize they missed being closer to relatives. They never said anything about the merch debacle or safety concerns. It just goes to show how fake they are in their videos. Boom. Good catch, inevitable hippo. I also love your tag name. Just saying. I want to know who the surfer that called them out is. There was a surfer that called them out. Me too. I'm listening to the podcast right now and it annoys me so much how not once they said we made a mistake. We hugely underestimated how important the Hawaiian language is. We weren't educated enough and there's no excuse for that, but we want to apologize and we're donating to this organization. Exactly. It's called taking accountability, which is something none of these people do. No, instead of apologizing, they went on and tried to justify it and went, woe is me. It's so hard on me. We had to leave because we had to, because these guys are bad, but they're really bad. It's deflection. That's what it is. It's making these guys seem out to be bad. So I'm less bad in your eyes. They could even have said, we understand what we did was wrong, but it was really difficult for us. The lengths the backlash went to, like people driving by our house. Yeah, that's going too far. Death threats are going too far. People telling you they know where you live are going too far. They are allowed to talk about that, but all they did was pity themselves. Yes. Oh, good job. And no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that stands for. They were like, we were so educated before moving to Hawaii. They really should have seen our intentions, but everyone was so mean. SOB. Exactly. You said it perfectly. You summarized my words perfectly. Like they could have just apologized, commented on the fact that people took the hate too far and moved on and it would have been fine. But they didn't even apologize. To my understanding, they didn't apologize. They just sat in victimhood and said, woe is me. I'm pretty sure the reason they didn't apologize is because there was no need. It's pretty clear they weren't in the wrong. People misunderstood what their intentions were and what they were trying to do. I think you should try repositioning your point of view on these people. Is this the same person that defended them up here? It is. Okay. Who is this person? Get out of here. Ha uh, ha Legit though. The initial response to the merch was the real response. Later just shows you not to ask your own followers for opinions. Yeah, 
well, and if you're going to ask followers, bleh, if you're going to ask your followers for your opinion, for their opinion, sorry, then uh, pre- be prepared to get it. And you can't get offended when it's not the exact same as yours. Sorry. Most people who follow them like them. So they will be biased and support their merch. The general public doesn't give an F who they are and will call them out on cultural appropriation. It also made me laugh that they said they talked to some friends and family about the merch beforehand and nobody said anything. They surround themselves with people who are very similar to themselves. Of course nobody saw anything wrong with it. Right? My favorite part was her almost in tears saying how awful it feels to hear go back to where you came from being said to you. Yet they're probably Republicans and have no issues on how the party treats certain demographics. Yo, 100%. Right on. Yeah. Legit. Part of the rant was Matt saying Abby was on the verge, or actually, I couldn't tell, of harming herself due to the backlash. He even said that This is too personal, we should cut this. But nope, they kept it in and basically skirted around it. If you want to be so relatable, talk about the real issues. Was she harming? And if so, how'd she overcome it? And how did you support her? The cyber bullying to self-harming ratio is so astronomically common, yet rarely addressed. But no, let's just woe is me, tell our sob story without actually addressing the issues and taking accountability. I used to really look up to Matt and Abby, but this unplanned podcast endeavor really showed a different side of them that I'm not impressed by. Yeah, I feel like this unplanned podcast is uh, is really their downfall because it's it's showing the real picture. It really is. Are you really canceled if you're still out here putting out ignorant content? ETA, I'm watching a bit now. Abby is crying, saying it wasn't their intention, and it seemed like, as you mentioned, they've completely missed the point. Whether it was your intention or not is not the question here. Ownership and accountability for ignorance is. As <laughs> But do they not live in Hawaii anymore? I swear I saw a video of their second pregnancy announcement and it looked like Hawaii. They went on vacation there recently and took the pregnancy announcement photos. Are you kidding me? You went back with your baby, I I mean, people said that for vacation, for a month to a place that you felt so unsafe that you had to leave and move. You went back to take pregnancy maternity pictures. Seriously? Did their video just allow a bunch of people to make fun of some influencer's kid's name because they made a video mocking unconventional name choices? How are they better than anyone? Legit. And this is an example of how people are coming at them on any little thing, picking apart their lives, making them seem like horrible people. Boo-hoo. Their kid's name is Griffin. It's cute. Maybe stick to the topic next time you decide to comment. You'll get it next time. What? You're... Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Although they were culturally appropriating Hawaii with their merch, I'm a firm believer that we should cancel, cancel culture. It doesn't do anyone good or allow the perpetrator, harm doer to own up to their mistakes and show accountability for their actions. Highly recommend listening to Loretta Ross's work on the subject. I also have a really hard time with the idea of any mainlanders moving to Hawaii and living and profiting off of Hawaiian culture or land, but being canceled is also an isolating experience and within cancel culture the people who are canceled are bound to be defensive of their actions instead of demonstrating true accountability i agree i agree and that's why i don't want bullying on my channel i don't want the shaming or anything like that here because it's not it it takes power away from the message. We posted some TikToks in our sweet one bedroom apartment and it actually started to gain viewership. We saw a really cool opportunity. I never. How old were they in 2020? 98. So she's 25. So she's, yeah, 21. And when were their kids born? Was this pre kid? She and Matt got married during the summer of their sophomore year in college in July 2019. Her brother and his wife have appeared on her Instagram account. In July 2022, 
They welcome their first son, G, and they welcome their second child, A, J, in August 2023. Okay, so 2019, they started, and then she said in 2020, they lost their job, so they started on TikTok. This showed up randomly today and got me thinking about how she always plays like it was Matt's idea to start their channel, and she wasn't into it. She mentioned in an interview episode on their podcast and on Josh Sav. But here she's saying how how their TikToks going viral was such a cool opportunity. Also, the podcast where they spoke of getting canceled, Matt had said that she kind of self-harmed and she said, blah, 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 IDK, but not taking accountability and playing victim in the situation kind of seems sus to me. There was also a video where she ate someone else's order that she didn't pay for. And now she's made a video of how it's difficult to take care of her kids when that's literally her only job in life, IDK, IDK either. Okay. So the most recent thing that they've been going through, this kind of ended up being a deep dive, I guess. Um, but the most recent thing was Matt jumped on the pod, a podcast, well, their podcast, and basically said that he was not celebrating Father's Day because it landed on his birthday and whining about that. So let's see what we can figure out and maybe something else I don't know hold on let's go back here where is it taking care of my son nah my wife does that hello to be a father and he needs to help regardless lmao but don't they have the exact same job influencers yeah this is where people started to think okay what's going on and i truly believe this you are free to have whatever kind of roles you want to have you want to do traditional roles that is all true go for it if that's what you love and that's what works for you go for it but it was him acting like he did her a favor by taking care of their son exactly so yeah it's not a favor to take care <coughs> To take care of your son. It's not a favor to clean up the house. Like, it's not it's not a favor. You're not doing something for your wife. Is it a nice gesture to clean up? Yes, it is. But it shouldn't be considered a favor. That they both had a hand in creating. And taking care of their house. Saying, oh, well, my wife's usually the one that does that. And my wife's usually the one that cleans the house. Um, you guys have the same exact job. You're home all day, every day. If you're doing traditional roles, then your wife doesn't work at all. But your wife works full time on social media, as do you. So that's not traditional family roles. It's just not. When people say that they're in these like traditional relationships, but it's like benefiting the guy only. I don't know. It comes across as sort of manipulative, in my opinion. Like a traditional family role, she doesn't work at all. Okay, but she does. So you're already not in traditional family roles and you're YouTubers. So nothing about that is traditional. Sorry, your life's just not traditional. It's just not. And then to say like these are traditional family roles is my wife takes care of my son. Since when do fathers not take care of their sons? You can have a fully traditional family. Right dynamic and still come home and take care of your son which you should want to do don't be fooled by me taking care of my son literally means i do not take care of my son does he not realize this or care question mark i don't like his energy whatsoever he seems narcissistic Uh oh there's the word that totally fits <laughs> i pay to keep my wife home full time and i still do a ton of daily cleaning and daily parenting exactly okay let's see what they have to say some of you are projecting your personal frustrations and it shows now i rarely make poor abby at least she can use this footage to get full custody during the divorce videos about this because it's a waste of my time and i don't need people on the internet to tell me who i am who my husband is and how our relationship is this is the most offensive video and hostile and passive aggressive video i've seen ever i mean she's so pissed and i love that because you know that the truth hurts we know what kind of people we are and other people are allowed to be wrong about us plus the positive voices far outweigh the negative voices yeah this video was actually made in 2022 and i'm sure at the time they did have a lot of positive voices but the tide has certainly shifted as you will see they do not get anywhere near the positive amount of comments that they used to sometimes it's nice to remember that i don't always have to be silent and just accept the hateful lies people say about us so here we go in our relationship we have different roles i can almost hear some people gasping right now i need to go back i'm not really sure what she's referring to here with the hateful lies i think that she's super pressed because i think a video went viral or something and i think that this like i said was since it was 2022 i think this is their first foray into like true genuine criticism and probably hate and i think that's why she's absolutely so pressed right now in this video but in my opinion that's one of the things that makes our marriage a partnership rather than two individuals cohabitating we consider one another's interests and strengths and allocate tasks accordingly we both take work tasks and we both take household tasks but i do tend to take on more of the cleaning and taking care of our baby. This doesn't make any sense because taking care of your son should never be a task that only one of you does and that he's not that good at. This is why people were absolutely pissed and I feel like she's failing to realize that, but whatever. That's what I enjoy and what I'm good at. Heaven forbid I'm a woman in 2022 that actually enjoys those tasks. Your husband didn't say, oh, my wife does the dishes and I do the trash and I do everything else. He said, my wife usually takes care of my son. I don't usually do that. My wife takes care of my son. Girl, get serious with yourself. My husband is pretty much responsible for the bulk of the business tasks, financial responsibilities, cars, insurance, and so on. I hate when people say stupid shit like this. Well, my husband handles the financial and the business responsibilities and he does the bills. How long do bills take? And how many people have it on autopay? How long does car insurance take to set up? Um, you do it once. You don't need to do it again. 
How long does that stuff take, right? And then you put it on auto pay, especially these two who have unlimited amounts of money. What does he do exactly once those things are done? The problem with taking care of your son and doing the dishes is that this is an everyday thing, sweetheart. You don't want to do those things. And I'm not good at those things. However, that's not to say that never cross over into one another's territories when one of us is feeling overwhelmed. Matt definitely does tasks around the house. Okay, then name one thing that he does. Okay, I love when people say he does so much and then can't even name one single thing that he does around the house. Just name one thing. That's it. Throw a couple examples out there for us. Very interesting. And thanks to the nature of our work, he is the most involved father. He's literally such a good dad that it's ridiculous I'm even saying that. And if you're saying otherwise, then you haven't spent a second with our family. Don't make me a victim when I certainly am not one. That's insulting to me. I just still can't get over how mad she is in this video. And by the way, I'm doing these voiceovers because they tried to copyright claim me, so I'm just breaking up the clips now and over explaining things. But <laughs> if you're wondering why this is happening, but anyway, just remember that she says that she doesn't want to be a victim for the duration of this video. It becomes a very ironic statement and it does not age well. And to the people that's Yo, they tried to copyright claim you. Oh, Ditch the video, I doubt you're married, and you certainly don't have children. Because if you did, then you'd realize that a healthy marriage requires teamwork. And on a team, not everyone can play the same position. And I also hope you can get viewership on your own without dragging other people's names through the mud. It's just not a good way to build an online platform. How many of you guys are married and have kids and thought that that video was complete hogwash? Okay, be so fucking serious for a second. Girl, he publicly said, don't be fooled. I don't usually take care of my kid or clean the house. Yikes. Yeah. Didn't he say in the video that he doesn't usually clean or take care of his child? So if the house is dirty, he will sit in the mess until you clean? Probably. That's how these people work. No, it's the fact that he acts like he was doing you a favor. It's the defensiveness, lol. He obviously made that video in order to get praise because he's used to getting praise, guys. He films, you know, himself doing things like helping her off. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what he wants. He 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 wants so bad to be like like this 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 perfect husband. He wants so bad to be this guy that everybody wants to be with, that everyone wants to be, but then he says stuff like, "Oh, I never take care of my son." And right after she had their second child, he like shunned her because he was upset because of his career, his music career going down the toilet and stuff like that. Now, I understand. No, no, I don't. I, I don't understand it. And I don't understand why you would post it to the internet because now your kid's going to grow up and see these videos and and realize like oh my dad resents me because I was born and I ruined his music career or whatever which like it's not a thing I don't I don't know that's gonna be a thing it's just really crazy to see these TikTok couples these YouTube couples go online go on social media and say look how perfect we are put their foot in their mouth defend what they say or defend each other like that super defensive video there and I don't know it's just I I don't know but their views are tanking I believe I believe they're getting ratioed a lot regardless they're still making tons tons of money on social media I think I like the idea of looking into influencer couples and what they portray online or try to portray online and kind of picking apart if it's true or not because we all know that social media has absolutely damaged mental health in our society when it comes to teenage girls teenage boys trying to alter their body trying to make themselves look a certain way these expectations of I need to look this way or I am less than it's the same thing with these couples who portrayed this like perfect happy marriage, this perfect happy couple, because that's when the comparisons start. And I don't think it's fair to only show the bright and happy side. And then when they try and show the real and raw side, it's fake. But the happy side is also fake. I worry that it's really dangerous and really predatory to other people's marriage, people who are not on social media. And that's why I do what I do. That's why I blow the lid wide open on these TikToks because it is so easy to make yourself look like the prince, like the hero, like the knight in shining armor in a 30 second clip in a one minute TikTok. But there are 24 hours in a day for him to go and fuck up again, for him to put his foot in his mouth. And half the time he does it on camera and gets huge amounts of backlash. And the new trend of, oh, I had an argument with my boyfriend, but at least he's not mad <laughs> from the Unplanned podcast. Like, seriously, Matt, I understand you're trying to be a good husband. Uh, you're not sorry to burst your bubble. But you being annoyed and resentful towards your children because y you brought them into this world is it, it's gonna damage their mental health 
they're going to pick up on those vibes. They probably already have picked up on those vibes and that's probably why Abby does do the majority of the care for the children because they don't want to be around you because you don't want to be around them. Kids pick up on vibes, especially babies. So, I don't know. This ended up going a little longer than expected, guys. It's a little bit of a deeper dive with the with kind of like... I feel like we had a summary of of the cancellation of Matt and Abby, you know, what the big things they've messed up on. Let me know if there's something I missed because I'm sure there is because there's always something that I missed. And if there's something that we need to talk about, that we need to discuss, we need to cover, let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for spending some time with me today and taking the time out of your day to watch this. I so appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you care to do so before you leave. It helps boost me into the algorithm. It helps get this information in front of more eyeballs. I hope you are having a fantastic, incredible, super hot day. It's 35 degrees today, wherever you are in the world. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.